Hello, my darlings. It's Michelle Visage. Welcome back to another episode of What You Packin'. Joining me today is the gorgeous player, St. Clair. I do declare. I do declare. How are you, sweetheart? Oh, I'm so good, Michelle. How are you? I'm wonderful. So happy to have you here. It is. It's, it's good being here. Tell me all about it. So you get the call for yeah. Drag Race All-Stars 5, mm -hmm. and you say, what? I'm ready. I'm scared. What? For months prior, I was like, you know what? If All-Stars comes around, and that's like the next goal, how can we start preparing? So I was preparing a little bit before, and then I got the official call, and it was kind of like go time. So you basically, what I'm hearing, is you manifested it. Oh, absolutely. I'm huge into manifesting. So you spent the time preparing. Yeah. But you had already done some light work. Yes. Like the glow up, because the mm -hmm. glow up for Blair St. Clair is really real. Thank you. So let's talk about that. I've spoken to you about this, obviously, out on the mm -hmm. road, and I've been watching everything that you're doing and have been doing. What changed for you when you left? I don't know exactly how to pinpoint like a certain moment, but when I left season 10 of Drag Race, it was almost kind of like I was like, reborn, and I feel like I had left baggage at, on set there, and I feel like I had just kind of like was moving toward this new place in life, and I'm kind of a perfectionist. I wanted to be like the best I could possibly be. Are you a Virgo? I'm a Taurus. Oh, so Virgo adjacent. It, it, very yes. adjacent. So I was just like, I want to be the best I can be. So I wanted to learn. And I was like, well, how can I learn? And I was like, so I sat down with makeup artists. I sat down with um, hairstylists. And I, I used to be a hair and makeup artist. How could I better myself? I went to dance classes. So you, you, how do you pick hair stylists and makeup artists? You said you were one. What does that mean? I went to you school. You went to cosmetology yeah, school? Yeah, I went to cosmetology school. And you have your license? Yes, I do. I worked in a salon for a year and a half. Hair? Hair, okay. doing hair. And then I was also in the evenings, after I worked at the salon, I would work in theaters, and I would work with wigs. And that's kind of like how I learned that I loved doing hair and makeup, not just for other people, but also on myself, too. Right. You came on in season 10 as kind of a th caricature-y, theater-y queen. Yeah, yeah. So, I thought when I was on season 10, at that point in time, entering the competition, I was like, oh, I'm ready. I'm sickening, I am that oh, girl. Oh, sickening. And, and they, they, I, I feel like I was too. Yes, you were. But, but watching it back on the big screen, which is the difficult part, I was like, ooh, okay, there's a, lot, there's a lot of things here that we could probably fix and tweak a little bit. When I critique you and I tell you certain things and you're in the moment and you can't see it, mm -hmm. when you watch it back, and I use, you know, every once in a while I'll say, yeah. when you watch this, you'll understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Do you understand what we're saying when oh, you watch yeah, it? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I don't think you always agree. Sometimes you're like, I totally get it, but maybe I still like what I did. Yeah. But it's like, I see the point, 100%. Right. Fair. 100%. So you started studying and you worked on yourself. Mm -hmm. And you started posting these videos and these yeah. pictures and your music is fabulous and that came out. You did all these dramatic music videos <laughs> yeah. with it. So do you think your switch came from your admission on season 10 of what happened I to think you? So. I, I think so. I, I think that was exactly it. It was the time when I was just like, felt the most pressure I'd felt in my entire life, the most like emotional buildup. I was like on filming, you know, a TV show. I never felt anything like that. And it just all kind of came out at once in like this one like word vomit because I was just so overwhelmed. And that was like the moment of like the switch in my life. And I didn't know it was going to be the moment where everything just clicked. It was just like, you're free now. Which is You're, you're so honest beautiful. with yourself. Yeah. And now you've moved on to the new and improved yeah, St. Clair. I have. And it's not, it sounds really beautiful, but there was a lot of ugly involved in it, too. It has to be. And like being okay with me and being okay with that part of my life to get to this place that I feel so much more confident and alive and happy and just freed and better. Well, that showed in All Stars 5, for sure. And again, I'm not talking about, you know, a tall, thin Blair St. Clair being able to wear fashion. Yeah. Because, yes, the glow up was real beautiful and all that, but I think there was a sense of calm that came with you this time and confidence that came yeah. with you. I felt like me. I feel like when I was in season 10, I was holding so much back because mm. I was afraid to let go. I was afraid of, I was fearful of failing. And, and like on All Stars, I was like, who cares? Like I'm gonna do everything that I do fully me. And yeah. I, there was no fear there. You won the reading challenge with Juju. Yeah. And our sweet little Blair <laughs> St. Clair reading the house down. Yeah. So what was that like for you? That was nerve wracking because I've yeah. never been thought that I was much of like a, a comedy queen or, uh -huh. or that I can be funny. But I, I think on All Stars I started to let go and be, embrace that I, I, I have quirks and I am funny to an extent. I think people watch the show and they really love the reading challenge and the Snatch Game of especially. Course. So I wanted to do really well with both, but especially at least one. Well, let's talk about your Ellen in mm -hmm. the Snatch Game. I thought you did a really good job with her. I hope Thanks. you're happy with what you did. I am. It wasn't a laugh riot, but no, I think it, it could have really been fun. way funnier but you got the essence of 
Ellen. It's weird because everyone says that the best improv is knowing your material of whoever your your character is and then leaving all of the information at the door Correct. and being in the moment. And I've never really experienced that until doing Snatch Game. So like after Snatch Game had finished, I was like, oh, I get it yes. now. If I were to do it again, I understand how to do it. It's about the volley. Mm -hmm. It's not about the preparation. There yeah. needs to be an element of preparation. You can't just go, I don't know. Yeah. Because Rue's going to ask you. But it's not about it's about having that stored but not being that. And if you don't Oh, no, you make up something on the fly. Correct! And that's how to do it. Yes. New twist this season. Mm -hmm. Lip sync assassin. <laughs> Even us as the judges would sit there trying to look under the script yeah. what you guys did. It, it, it was like, maybe who would really, really slay this lip sync song? No, uh -huh. no nothing connected at all. You never knew who was walking through. Exactly. Never knew. So cool. Yeah. So brilliant. I know you guys must have been like, Trr. but for us, it was really amazing as the viewer, like really exciting. And I hope right. we do that forever. Was there a challenge that you feel that you could over slash should have won? I'm really proud of everything I did, but if I could have won a challenge, I really wanted to win the girl group challenge that Shay won. And I will say on the record, Shay deserved to win the challenge. Yes. But that was when I really wanted to win. That was also the one that I put the most pressure on myself with because right. people know that I'm a musician, that I'm a singer. So when I got up to the microphone, I, like you guys didn't really see this, but I was nerves galore. Yeah. I was just like, <laughs> I yeah. can't, like it was just, that was the moment for me in the competition that I kind of was like, hey, you did that. That was the thing that you were probably the most stressed and pressured about. You succeeded, you got through. And well, good for you for good. doing that. I can tell you as a fellow singer that there are times when pressure is so great that your whole body starts to shake and there's no yes. controlling it. It takes over your entire body. Yeah. The whole entire thing. But you got all the way to the end. Yeah. Were you proud of yourself even though you didn't get to the final three? Oh, absolutely. You weren't Without putting pressure on yourself that it wasn't good enough. No. I think two years ago, I would have said, oh, you weren't good enough. You didn't make it to the very end. Top four is not too shabby. Heck no, it's That's, not. You Top did it. four among so many amazing all stars. Gotta remember that. Yeah. Let's talk about your fashions. Oh, yes. We're gonna start out talking about this red one because I think on the main stage, I told you how much I love this. Mm -hmm. This was just so classy and amazing and gorgeous. A, who made it? So Florence DeLee made this one from New York City. And the theme of the runway was the Queen of the Prom. Yes. So many things came to mind with Queen of the Prom. Immediately, 80s prom. Right. But like Juju like, did. Like Juju right. did. And Juju's was so well done. So good. But I was like, oh, how many other people are going to have something just like it? And then I was like, well, what would I wear today to prom if I could go today? And I was like, oh, I don't want to wear anything that society tells me I have to be feminine or masculine. I want to wear something right in the middle. So we came up with like a tuxedo dress. Our Victor Victoria. Yeah, very moment. Victor Victoria. Really, really beautiful. And it just looks so regal on you. And I would wear that as well. You, you could borrow it. Absolutely. I don't know if our, my hips would fit in there, but I'd oh, like yeah, to she try. She will fit. <laughs> <laughs> this one we didn't get to see in the middle here. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. Oh, it's, it's probably my favorite look that I had brought with and me. And who made this one? This is from Mondo Guerra. Okay. And he won All Stars of Project Runway. Yes, and of course, he, of course. He's just so incredibly talented. I work with him probably the most out of anyone. And the idea for this was a bow inspired look. And I wanted to use not only like literal bows, but violin bows. So I have like a little prop violin with it. And all of the fabric was actually handmade for me and manufactured with my sheet music from original music that I've created. She spent a pretty penny on this outfit. Yes. <laughs> and she didn't go wear it. And who made that one? Diego Montoya. What was the fitting like for that? Because it seems stiff. When I tell you moving in it is like it's almost just an art form. How much does it weigh? I think it's like 30 or 40 pounds. Yeah, it's super heavy. It's super heavy. It, all of them are individual Swarovski crystals that are yeah. spiked and beaded and dangled all over. It literally looks like a Met Gala piece. Oh, it's, thanks. It's really stunning. I wish you nothing but success in all your endeavors. Thank and, you. And thank you so much for coming. Thank you for being part of All Stars 5. Oh my gosh. Really proud of you. See you next time. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of What You Pack In, and I will see you next time. Bye. Do you want everything RuPaul's Drag Race at your fingertips? Then head over to YouTube now and subscribe to the RuPaul's Drag Race channel and you will get all the episodes of everything you ever want, including brand new episodes of What You Packin'. Hi.